Well, throughout the Global News Relay, we'll be going to live students of many different universities. We begin with the Asian College of Journalism, or ACJ, in Chennai, India. ACJ is immersed in global news, collaboration, and advanced digital technology. We are honored to work with them. Arnav Bharatkara and Remya Paramadas join us live from Chennai, India. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hey. Hello, we're good. good. How are you? Great to hear from you. We're doing great. So, we're looking forward to seeing your stories. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, it's been a it's been a great challenge actually because uh, yeah, it's, it's actually been great collaborating with a lot of universities, and plus finding a lot of stories on solution journalism has also been kind of challenging because it's it, I mean definitely more challenging than we thought it would be, but it's been great. I think we've lined up some really great stories, like on, on a lot of great stuff like zero waste management, solar power, uh, a new seed variety that's being developed. I think we've done pretty good. So I think we'll also let you take a look at it. I don't know. Yeah, totally. Try yeah, I mean, you know, we were number crunching and we had about close to 25 story ideas and, you know, bring that down to six stories and that to, you know, align them in order of priority. I mean, giving an order to this and saying which one is more effective than the other. I mean, that was a real tough call for us. But trust me, I think, you know, the whole team that was involved really pulled it through. I think this is, this is a great experiment and I would love to, you know, carry this forward somewhere else to a bigger level. Yeah, we've really had a really great time working with you guys, and we're so excited to be seeing all of your stories. Yep, same here. We're looking yeah, forward to seeing the other totally. two stories Me too. too. Um, who is that professor standing next to you guys? Um, okay, no, he's not next to us, but you know, our professor, Devdas Radharam, he's around, of course, and we'd like to introduce you to him before you Just get to our stories because. His mind, the way he really gets those stories out for us, I think that's, that's, it's, just, it's a great motivation just, for all of us. Just come here. Just, just, <coughs> and yeah, this, this is him. Is this is the man behind all the magic that's happened around the ACJ broadcast. Trust me, he's really there. Hi. Hi. How how has it been getting all of this prepared with your class? Uh, just a second. Yeah. Hello. How's it been? Hi. How has this all been getting um, everything prepared with all of your students? Yeah, it's been exciting and uh, it's uh, incredibly exciting to work with these kids. And uh, we've, uh, like I know said, and uh, they said uh, we've got uh, some very interesting stories lined up for you. Uh, and uh, uh, the technical things, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we have done everything on a mobile phone. We have done, we haven't used the uh, cameras, television cameras. Uh, and uh, uh, it's been incredibly challenging for us. Well, ACJ is involved in a lot of global projects. Why this particular focus? Uh, this focus is, you know, just our, um, <clears throat> we personally feel that we think that um, uh, journalism is uh, a process and uh, the future of journalism uh, in the post-truth world is uh, collaboration. <laughs> And uh, we, our focus has always been collaborating with a lot of students and uh, uh, the communities around the world, all around the world. And uh, uh, the point being, uh, if you want to have more impact, you need to be, you need to be collaborating, and you need to have more. You can have more impact by collaborating. So, why these types of stories? Why do they partic uh, spark your interest in creating stories and being part of Global News Relay? Uh, this being the solution journalism thing, uh, so we I, we felt that we shouldn't be looking at uh, uh, reporting what's going wrong. There are incredible people and incredible examples of people doing something to fix or uh, to get things right. So we, it's uh, thanks to Sandra uh, for suggesting this topic, uh, solution journalism. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we should be focusing more on positive stories as well as the negative stories. Well, we're looking forward to seeing your stories. We've been talking with Arnav and Remya and their professor, Dev, from the Asian College of Journalism. Now here's ACJ's contribution to the Global News Relay. Hello and welcome to ACJ News Live. This is the Asian College of Journalism leg of the Global News Relay 2017. I'm Meghna. And I'm Aditya. 
and we are bringing you solution journalism stories from Chennai, India. An Indo-Australian research project is working towards sustainable agriculture and also to provide better nutrition. Sukanya brings us the story on rice seeds that can grow both in saline water and marshlands. Scientists from the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation in Chennai and the University of Tasmania in Australia recently signed an agreement to fund a research in developing a variety of rice that is tolerant to saline water. The project is exploring the use of halophytic wild rice relative called Oriza Kuakata that occurs in mangrove swamps along the coasts of India and Bangladesh. If I have to transfer a gene from a mangrove plant to completely unrelated species, then regular plant breeding I cannot do. Okay? So for that, I need to use a mechanism to isolate this gene and through a different process called molecular breeding or transgenic research, I, must be, I will be in a position to transfer this gene into a um, completely new crop plant or whatever it is. So this is what we call it as transgenic crop plant development. There are several uh, varieties of it. All these things we call them as germplasm. Okay? So each germplasm will have a unique characteristic. Okay? This pea may be rich in high protein, but another variety of this may be very resistant to some of the diseases. Another pea variety can grow in a highly salt affected area. So each one has a gene inside to express this particular character. That we call it as genetic diversity. So this genetic diversity helps us okay, develop a new plants, new varieties and so on. So that if I want to get a high protein uh, pea plant with disease resistance, I have to cross these two plants so that the offspring will have the characteristics of both. Recognized as a blue solution by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, it is a new approach to food security in times like these when India is suffering from drought, increasingly saline coastlines, an ever-growing population, hunger and other such abiotic stresses. In Tamil Nadu, it can be cultivated in Chennai, it can be cultivated somewhere in Coimbatore, uh, it can be cultivated wherever there is a problem of salinity. Normally, salinity occurs along the coastline, so we expect uh, people to cultivate in the coastal districts. Fine. So how best I can use our technology, science and technology, to the benefit of the society? This is Sukanya Datta reporting for Global News Relay with camera person Livin Vincent. A Chennai-based NGO is helping people tackle their depression and also trying to avert suicide. Ria brings us the story of this NGO called Sneha. In every single hour, approximately 15 people kill themselves in India. With alarming suicide rate reported across the country, Sneha Helpline offers unconditional emotional support to people who are in distress. Sneha is an organization that started in 1986 on April 13th. It's a Tamil New Year Day here in Tamil Nadu. And it was initiated, started by Dr. Lakshmi Vijayakumar, who is a psychiatrist. About 40% of the people who commit suicide has family problems. What we do is that uh, people who, who do not have anyone to talk to, people who are lonely, people who are depressed, uh, People who feel that there is no one for them to understand can talk to us in confidence. It's more than 3 lakh people so far have called us. This is what we say is the fresh calls, the first time calling. So we also have a repeat calls. Recently, Tamil Nadu government wanted to implement uh, health issues, specifically on the um, adolescent, the school children. They, because the suicide was on a high level between the school children during the exams. So they wanted to implement certain awareness in the schools. They approached us and we have rolled out a program to create an awareness uh, for the teachers. We call that program as uh, training the teachers. We train the teachers and in turn, the teachers go to the school and identify the children who may have suicidal attitude, who may feel lonely, who may have 
question. Identify them and try to help them. Sneha has initiated several programs to spearhead the fight against suicides. Initiatives like Katamanar Coil Project, which is a project for community storage of pesticides, has helped in reducing the farmer suicides in the place. Umbrella called Defenders India. Under that, there are similar organizations. It's the same concept, works all over India. There are about six branches in, in Kerala, in, one in Pondicherry, one in Tamil Nadu, about two in Andhra Pradesh, uh, two in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Delhi, uh, Calcutta, and Shri. This is Shriya Matthews with camera person Levin Vinson reporting for Global News Relay. The Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, has come up with a new device that can detect health issues, not in humans, but in pipelines. Here's Kriti with this story. Guided Ultrasonic Monitoring System, or CUMS, is an invention by Detect Technologies, an IIT Madras startup that has come up with a system to detect defects and corrosion in pipelines. We at Detect have been working on a couple of products for quite some time now all the while keeping innovation and passion for technology at the center of what we do. Now, our innovations are targeted towards the process industry. When you look at the process industry, they have few very specific problems. Uh, the biggest being pipelines are their greatest assets, but turns out that pipelines are also their highest risk. Uh, if you had looked at the news last year uh, in Andhra Pradesh, there were 23 people who passed away because of an explosion in gate. This happened because they have no system that continuously monitors the thickness and corrosion of these pipelines. We at Detect aim to solve this with intelligence and the technology that we built. So that's when we came out with our first product, GUMS. So what we have here is the test equipment for GUMS. It consists of primarily four units, the transmitter, the receiver, the pulse unit, and the data acquisition unit. So it works on the fact that any pipeline has a unique signature based on its structural health. So as you can see here, this perfectly healthy pipeline has a particular signature. Now in the event of any corrosion occurring at any point, there would be a change in the signature and that is what will depict the health of the pipeline. GUMS is unique in the sense that these signals are obtained continuously, real time and can warn the user of cracks occurring real time. And apart from that, these signals also can be occurred at high temperatures, which is not exhibited by any other sensor in the world. Comes would act like a nervous system for a network of pipelines and warn the user of impending leaks much before they happen. Comes is a breakthrough technology in an industry which was long neglected. I am Kriti Singh with Nachike Dyaskar. The Cochin International Airport has become India's first solar-powered airport. Ramya brings us the story. Cochin International Airport is India's first airport to be built on a public-private partnership. It is also the seventh busiest airport in the country. In 2015, it achieved the distinction of becoming the world's only airport to be run entirely on solar power. The man behind the project is Vijay Kurian, managing director of the airport. One was the technology. Second is the criticism that you know you're going to use so much of land, because this land which we have put up the panels is meant for the future expansion of the cargo. So then I came with the solution that, okay, as in when we build the terminal building, we'll put this on the top of it. The 12 megawatt plant comprises more than 46,000 solar panels spread across an area of 45 acres of land. Nearly 50,000 units of electricity are produced in a day, and the excess production is instantly fed into the Kerala State Electricity Board. But that's not all. There are several new projects in place, and the airport is expanding its power production to cater to these. As a major expansion program of uh, CL, we, we began a major uh, sprawling uh, project of uh, T3. Naturally, the, uh, the, the consumption rate will get doubled. And envisaging that, we, we, we are also on the parallel, we are we are uh, doubling the uh, installation capacity of uh, um, solar power projects. Three more solar power plants will soon be up, including a solar car port, which is another first in India, which can accommodate 14,000 cars and produce 2.6 megawatts of power. So at the end of May, uh, the total outcome of uh, the uh, three major solar plants 
will be 1 lakh unit, 1 lakh and uh, 10,000 unit a day, whereas our, uh, the consumption rate will, the consumption, daily consumption will be 80, 80 to oh, 90,000 units. So anyway, we can uh, feed an extra 10,000 uh, unit of power a day to the KCB uh, grid. In effect, the solar plants will be able to prevent 300,000 tons of carbon emission over a period of 25 years. This is Ramya Padmadas reporting for the Global News Relay 2017. A community in Chennai has come up with a unique zero waste management system. Srishti brings us the story. Belgian Peter Van Geet, who has been living in Chennai for 17 years, founder of Chennai Trekking Club, started the Zero Waste Management Initiative. It aims at explaining zero waste to 3,000 fishermen folk in the fishermen colony in Nochikupa. The community is divided into four blocks. The group goes door to door explaining and distributing pamphlets about zero waste. They want to reach all the fishermen in the 20 km stretch of Marina, Nochikupam and the lighthouse. Um, initially there was a bit of resistance, right? Because, uh, I mean, people are used to throwing waste. I mean, the general idea, even with you and me, is I have my waste, my kitchen waste, I have my other packet, the plastic waste, I all mix it together, I dump it outside and it's not my problem anymore. But that's a big mistake, of course, right? The people think, okay, the government will take care or the guy who collects the garbage in the neighborhood will take care. But once you mix these two types of waste, it, it becomes very difficult. I mean, uh, you, have to, you see these people who go in these stinking garbage bins trying to pick out whatever is recyclable. Five tons of valuable waste is saved from landfills every month. The waste that is collected is segregated into different bins, which are marked with different colors to distinguish between plastic, paper, metal and wet waste. The money earned after segregation is used to fund the volunteers. Block A of the community has become a zero waste zone. Now, Peter Wangate and his group plan on moving towards Block B, followed by C and D. And the news quickly spreads that, okay, Block A is fully clean, uh, there's no waste anymore, stinking garbage bins around that block. So people were quickly understanding the benefits on the own community in terms of cleanliness and, and uh, impact on health, uh, basically. Simple yet effective, this zero waste management model can be replicated anywhere. This is Srishti Sinha reporting with camera person Sukshma Ramakrishnan. A Chennai-based journalist has gone beyond his call of duty to help solve a number of social issues. Ria brings us the story of S. Madhavan. Samaritan of the modern times, an entitlement that suits best for S. Madhavan who has rendered immense social service. By voluntarily taking up issues, he has been fighting for what has been denied to the common people. I have been here from 2009 and uh, when I interacted with people here, here in the nearby bus stand, there is one Kaiveli bus stand is there. There I found uh, two buses particularly, 5A and A51, didn't stop. So I wrote to our government, uh, there is one CM special cell, Chief Minister special cell is here. I wrote and uh, since this is a junction, like Arakonam junction, if two important buses don't stop here, it is putting hardship to many people. Why don't you consider? There is one canal here. Uh, at the center of that canal, there was a platform was laid. I used to walk to the station through that platform only. When the platform was laid, uh, when, when there was some work going on, I just, suddenly it came. Why can't we try plant trees? So this, uh, this is a vacant place and uh, there is a big road also. We need shades. People, poor people are walking this side to stations and office goers are also using this. Then I again I wrote to government and uh, again government um, accepted my view and uh, uh, this um, highways, it is coming under highways department. The corporation told me though this is coming under highways department, we will work it out or pass, pass this information to highways. In two weeks ago only, on Friday we planted all the trees through the help of PayPal. PayPal staff actually sponsored this and this uh, came as a news in downtown last Friday. One stress is 
only when where there is a good officials we have to be always in search of good officials that is a challenge before us also then the rest of the world craves for recognition for madhavan it is a self fulfilling exercise this is riya matthews with the camera person to the man basu reporting for global news relay this brings us to the end of our leg of the gnr so this is asian college of journalism chennai signing off stay tuned for the next bulletin I still cannot believe how many tons of waste they pick up at that marina every month. Yeah, Five that, tons, that's crazy. That was a great topic and a great story to uh, work on. Yeah, they honestly did a really great job. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us with that story, with those stories. Uh, coming up on the Global News Relay, how the community of Bristol is coming together to help the homeless. Plus, journalism students in Dubai tell us about an annual breast cancer campaign providing free medical check ups for women. And lucky or unlucky, Refugees who escaped Syria find themselves in even worse conditions in Bulgarian refugee camps.